It then would be an hour before U.S. Border Patrol and tactical teams arrive and shoot and fatally kill the suspect. During that time, parents, as you can see here, they're showing up. They are in a crisis. They are begging police to get inside, to go save their kids. They are crying. They are screaming. And police there are holding them back and telling them to stay back. Yeah, absolutely emotional there. Anger oh. and frustration is mounting today in Uvalde, Texas, over the police response to Tuesday's deadly school shooting. Let us do this, man. Let us do this, man. Come on. Let us do this. It's good news. We need to get everybody back. It's already been about an hour, and they still can't get the kids all out. This new video shows parents trying to storm the school themselves as police try and hold them back. It's estimated... Once the, the shooter gained entry, he was inside the building for 40 minutes to an hour before being shot by Border Patrol agents. It is safe to say that the grieving will go on in Uvalde for weeks to come, but now... Uh, Rob Elementary a School, where the mass shooting occurred in Uvalde, Texas, it took them an hour to do anything about it. In fact, they were far more concerned in putting literal parents, begging them to do something in handcuffs, than they were interested in, in barging in and doing their jobs to save those children. So I wanna start off with this video. Someone who was on the scene at the time was recording as the parents were begging the police to do something. One of the parents was tackled to the ground and pepper sprayed. It's, it's hard to see it because the person who was filming this uh, wasn't holding the camera steadily and all of that. Uh, but at least you get a sense of the chaotic situation. Let's take a look. They later put a mother in handcuffs because she was asking them too aggressively to go in and save her children. We'll get to those details in just a moment, but I wanna give you the timeline because it's now become abundantly clear that police officials are either lying to reporters or they're withholding information because we were also told that there was an armed resource officer who engaged with the shooter prior to the shooter going into that fourth grade classroom and barricading himself. Now they're changing their story and saying that is not the case. So which one is it and why are we getting bad information? Let me give you a timeline based on reporting from the Washington Post. This is what shows that police did nothing for about an hour. Authorities agree that the gunman was dead by 1 p.m. But have offered conflicting accounts as to whether the attack began around 11.30 a.m. or closer to noon. By 11.43 a.m., the school announced on Facebook that it was under lockdown. Remember that time, 11.43 a.m., citing gunshots in the area. The students and staff are safe in the building, it said. Now, in public transmissions on a radio channel used by local EMS workers, someone said at 11.53 a.m. that a lieutenant had requested a response to the area of the school. As the, responses, as the response was discussed, one official was heard telling first responders, please just stay back. By 12.10 p.m., a Facebook live stream recorded outside the front of the school showed police cars had established a perimeter. Helicopters were flying overhead and onlookers had gathered. Seven minutes later, school authorities announced on social media there was an active shooter at Robb Elementary. Now, after hearing the shooting, authorities said a tactical team formed a stack formation and eventually breached the classroom door and killed Ramos, the shooter, in a shootout. Ramos was in the room for some time before police entered. And it was unclear whether he killed the students when he first barricaded himself or just before the police breached the room. Now here's where it gets interesting and it proves that they clearly had done nothing for about an hour. Shots were still being heard at 12.52 p.m. an hour later. According to radio recordings at 1.06 p.m., 
Uvalde police announced on social media that the attack was over. So Cenk, we hear over and over again that we don't need to do anything to regulate guns. In fact, we just need more guns. We need more good guys with guns to protect us from the bad guys with guns. Well, according to conservatives, there were a ton of good guys with guns just outside the school who failed to do a damn thing for an hour, for an hour. Anyway, uh, go yeah. ahead. Uh, so first of all, another fact about the cops, uh, they did not respond in the first 12 minutes uh, when, the, when the shooter was outside the school. He spent 12 minutes outside the school before he'd ever gone in and the cops weren't there. And so they have not explained why it took so long to get to an active shooter. He'd already killed his grandmother, he'd already driven to the school and hung out at the school for all that time. Or maybe, I don't know, they could explain it. Maybe they thought, oh, that's a guy with a gun, that's awesome, it's Texas, open carry. Carry anywhere you like, or you're right next to the school, you might murder the kids, that's no problem. It's no problem in Texas. Oh, You killed the kids, nobody could have seen that coming. No, we all could see it coming, so stop lying. So I'm gonna get to more details of how cowardly the cops are in one second. They're amazing facts. But look, this I've told you this before, but I'll put a, a, a saying on it. You know how there's a cab, all cops are bastards. I don't know that that's true, and we've talked about that in the past. But I'm going with ACAC, all cops are cowards. Now, and I'll tell you why, that one is indisputable. It's not because they're born cowards, it's not that they're not they're less courageous than the average person. No, they go into the police academy and they're taught cowardice. They're taught you are more important than the citizens. And by the way, you can just ask a cop, if they're not lying straight to your face, they will tell you that is emphasized over and over again, protect yourself first, protect yourself first. Which is the exact opposite of what we should be training them. The whole point is you're a cop that is there to protect and serve the community. And you're supposed to prioritize the citizens above your own safety. That's the whole point of a cop. It's like telling a fireman, no, no, don't rush into a burning building, you gotta protect yourself first. Uh, well, right. then you could never do your job, right? And But we accept it as normal. They say it all the time, cops will openly say, we gotta protect ourselves first. Well, then you're a coward and you've been, and it, you weren't born that way, you were taught you must be a coward. Can I jump in really quick? Because something that I've heard repeated over and over again in regard to the actions of the police in this particular school shooting is that following Columbine, the training indicates that they are not supposed to wait. So I keep hearing that from you know intelligence officials who do their interviews on CNN. I don't believe and them all. at all. Yeah, I, I question that. I really do. No, uh, there's because no way that's true. It, because it's clear to me, I mean, look, it's clear to me that they didn't feel like that was their job, that they needed to go in there immediately. You have parents begging them, begging them. Imagine being a parent knowing that your student, knowing that your child is a student at that school. You hear the gunfire, you hear it. And the cops are standing there. They're, by the way, they were waiting for Border Patrol to show up and help them out. Why? There's like a thousand of you there. We see it on video. There's like dozens of guys with massive weaponry, but they've been taught to be cowards. So they're like, "What? There's gunfire in there." Yeah, there's also children in there. That's why you're supposed to go in. Oh no, but we might get a hangnail. Okay, so now let me give you more amazing facts. Um, so, first of all, there's a woman, Miss Gomez. Uh, so she's the one that yes. Anna's telling you about. You know, so. She gets handcuffed because she's complaining, my kids are in there and I'm afraid they're gonna get murdered. And they're like, well, we're not gonna bother going in there, but we will arrest you, okay? And so they handcuff her, Yep. and that's marshals do that, okay? Because now at this point, there's like several different departments there and they're all cowards and none of them are going in, except there's an important exception I'm gonna get to, okay? So, but eventually Gomez convinces one of the local cops to at least get her handcuffs off her, and she does. You know what he does, and you know what she does? She climbs the fence on her own. Gets a, she like waits for the cops to be looking somewhere else, so she can run past them. She climbs the fence, gets into the building, and gets her kids from inside the school, and then gets them out and runs out. Yeah. She saved her kids. She saved her kids' life. Now here's a giant question. Wait a minute. You, the cops are saying that the guy had barricaded himself in with the kids in one classroom. So where'd she get the kids? 
Did she go inside the classroom? That that doesn't seem likely. So it sounds like logically there were kids in other parts of the school, mm -hmm. and the gunman could have gone out at any time and murdered them all. Right. But the cops won't go in, and that mom's like, "Oh no, no, no! Get the hell out of my way!" And earlier they had handcuffed her. Thank God, at least one local cop. He didn't know she was going to do that, but got her out of the handcuffs so she could save her own kids' lives. So, guys, think about how dangerous this is. Because now nobody's going to listen to cops in an active shooter situation. In an active shooter situation, the cops are going to say, don't do anything, we got this. And everybody's going to think, no, you don't. You're all cowards. You're not going to go into the building. We all know it. So there's going to be goddamn mayhem because they're taught to, to, to make sure that they, they're the most important, precious thing in the world. Screw the citizens. And guys, this is not new. In this case, they didn't protect the kids. But remember, they also shoot kids. Tamir Rice was a 12 year old that they shot in two seconds. They didn't bother telling him to put down his, it turned out to be a toy gun that somebody complained about. They didn't bother to investigate. They just walked right up to the kid and shot him. And why? Our lives are more important. Don't bother to see if he's 12. Don't bother to see if it's a toy gun. Don't bother to see anything. Just kill, 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 kill. Because cops are the most important thing in the world. But now get a load of this. Again, they're not born cowards because Texas State Trooper Juan Maldonado shows up because one of his friends has a teacher inside. It turns out his wife is a teacher, his friends. And his friend's wife died. She was one of the women who was shot. You know what? She, she protected the kids. And as she was protecting the kids, the gunman shot her, okay? So Maldonado is not there officially. He's there for a friend. You know what he does? Because he's not told. By the cops at the at the that are there, you're not allowed to go in. Okay, otherwise we'll fire you if you're not a coward. He goes in, and he shows the the cuts on his arm because he broke the window. Again, he's not he doesn't have the equipment. He doesn't have anything. He's just like I got to go save my friend's wife and the kids. He breaks into the uh, into the school, and uh, you know what he did. Uh, they were able to, this is from the uh, Wall Street Journal. Mr. Maldonado said he and the friend were able to enter the building to get the students out. It turns out the cops could have gotten tons of students out. They just literally chose not to. 